Have you ever fallen in love with a town just by looking at it? Maybe you saw a charming town in a romantic comedy, could have been on a road trip. There's just something about cute towns that stick with people. Today we're looking at some of the cutest towns I know of or have been to. These are the types of towns you fall in love with just on looks alone. Sort of like a Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover model, but a town. On this video we won't be bogging it down with a bunch of stats like crime rates and cost of living, things like that. We're going for charm alone. That being said, Said, keep in mind, good looking towns are probably a little more expensive than most towns. I would love to do a second video based on towns you suggest, so please let me know in the comment section of this video and we'll probably do another one. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. Got it? Get it? Good. Let's take a look. Number 10, Newcastle, Delaware. When most people hear about Delaware, it is always something nasty in the news coming out of Wilmington, and it never seems to be much about the stunning small historic towns this state has to offer. There is a lot of history in Delaware, and you could see it in small town architecture. Newcastle is south of Wilmington on the Delaware River, and it's a cute town, even though it's so close to Wilmington, which sucks. But if you want a cute, walkable town, you should give Newcastle and its 5,000 residents a look. And when I say the buildings are cute, it's not just like the official state buildings, museums, and things like that that are holding on to their colonial architectural roots. The homes look like downtown London in parts of Newcastle. Most of the homes are townhomes, and they go for anywhere between 300,000 and 600,000. If you get close to the river, it gets a lot higher, just like any place. The closer you get to the water, the more expensive it's going to be. Newcastle has always kind of reminded me of, even though it's not New England, a, like a charming New England town. It just has that vibe. The downtown courthouse is part of the first state national historic park. They have a nice park down there, the Newcastle Battery Park. It's like on the river and it's, it's kind of a nice place. Number nine, Hilo, Hawaii. Hilo, Hawaii is on the big island. It's not over there on Oahu with, you know, Honolulu and all that, where most of the tourists go. The big island has some small towns, Hilo being the largest one on the island. Now, it's not your typical charming town. It's, you know, a lot of towns, it's the architecture and things like that. This one, it's the nature surrounding the town. If you look east towards mainland, you see nothing but the Pacific Ocean, and that is always something nice to look at. After that, you're surrounded by, I don't know, not really a jungle, but a lot of tropical scenery, palm trees, things like that. It's the Hawaiian Islands, so everything's just kind of laid back and a little more relaxing, I guess you could say. Many of the old wooden buildings here are part of the National Register of Historic Places. One thing about Hilo is it gets pretty wet. It's on the windward side of the island, which compared to the leeward side, which is very dry, they like get almost no rain on the west side of the island. When I say almost no rain, I mean no rain compared to the rest of Hawaii. Number eight, Nantucket, Massachusetts. Nantucket is one of those places that's in movies all the time. It could be a drama, it could be a comedy, it could be a, a romantic comedy. Nantucket always seems to show up every couple of years in at least one movie. Nantucket is a town on the island of Nantucket. It's right out there by Martha's Vineyard off the shore of Massachusetts, and Rhode Island kind of. Nantucket is one of the more charming New England coastal towns and being on an island makes it even more exciting. Nantucket has a lot of history, but way Whaling is what really put this island on the map. As a matter of fact, Herman Melville's classic Moby Dick has Ishmael starting his voyage in Nantucket. The docks of Nantucket are about 26 miles south of Cape Cod. If you want to get there, there is no bridge. You got to take a ferry or swim, whichever you prefer. Hope you could swim 26 miles. They also have an airport too, in case you uh, decide to fly over there. If you ever visit Nantucket, you will make your way down to the wharf area and that's where you'll fall in love with this town. What's not to love about that weather beaten wooden shingle siding that old colonial homes had by the coast. Even the newer buildings have that same look. Look, it's definitely a walkable island, even though they got a lot of cars there. The streets are really narrow. The town was built during a different time. Even if you want to visit for the day, just go check out Nantucket. The reality is that's all most of us can do. Not many people can afford to live on Nantucket or at least buy a house. If you go to Zillow, there's homes going for, let me see, the cheapest one I can see right now is one point. To six million dollars. I would say just by eyeballing it, the average is somewhere around five million dollars, with some of the homes on the coast going for like 40 and 50 million. 
Number seven, Lambertville, New Jersey. Yes, New Jersey's actually on a list about something positive. Reality is, New Jersey's not that bad. I mean, they overtax their residents far too much, and they do have some pretty rundown cities like most states do. New Jersey's a strange place, but they do have some very nice, very wealthy neighborhoods and towns. Lambertville is known as the antique capital of New Jersey. So if you want to do some antiquing on your weekend, you go to Lambertville. Lambertville is up the Delaware River from Trenton, New Jersey. Now that doesn't sound like a good thing, but it's far enough away where people don't associate the two. Sort of like having an idiot third cousin that blows his nose in his shirt in the middle of Spanish class. Yep, I lived that dream in high school. This place has some amazing old homes. I'm talking they were built in the 1880s that are going for like $600,000 and they are amazing. There's a handful of them right now for sale. The downtown area of Lambertville is adorable. I mean, plenty of antique shops, restaurants, good places to spend your money. In town next to the river, they have a canal and they have a, like a little river walk or canal walk type thing right there. That's always great to have in a small town. Lambertville has a population of about 4,000. Now, right across the Delaware River is New Hope, Pennsylvania. They're kind of like this little metro area thing. There's an additional like 2,600 living there. Lambertville's definitely worth the drive if you're in New York City, Philadelphia, Trenton, or let's say Allentown. Definitely worth the drive to go visit this town. Number six, Montpelier, Vermont. Back to New England we go with Montpelier. Montpelier is the state capital of Vermont and it's also the smallest state capital in the United States. And in my opinion, it's probably the best looking state capital. If you ever want to take a really good train trip, you could go from Washington DC or New York, Philadelphia, whatever, but you could take a Amtrak train called the Vermonter and go all the way up to Montpelier. And it is worth the trip, especially if you go in the fall or even in the winter. It's a good looking trip. This is a state capital and it has a population that's right around 8,000. That's it. That doesn't even qualify them as a city. They're a town. But once you get past the fact that they're a state capital and all that good stuff, really it is just adorable New England river town. Great architecture and a lot of history. Number five, Medicine Park, Oklahoma. Now this one's a little bit strange. Medicine Park is like the first resort town in Oklahoma. It's in the Wichita Mountains, which is about 70 miles south of Oklahoma City, near Lawton. So there's this guy back in the 1920s who found the area and thought it was beautiful. And the local Native Americans told him that the creek that's called Medicine Creek had medicinal values. So seeing dollar signs, he kind of dammed it up and made this nice swimming hole thing and turned it into a resort town. So people decided that this was a great place to vacation, including presidents, celebrities, and gangsters. It's said that Bonnie and Clyde have been here and Al Capone would vacation here. A lot of the buildings are done in cobblestone. Now, even though it's a resort town, they do have residents there. They have about 500 people that live there full time. This is a pretty nice little town. Number four, Silverton, Oregon. Just south of me here in the Portland metro area, you have the town of Silverton. Silverton sits on the Silver Creek just east of Salem, Oregon. I went to Silverton, I don't know, about two months ago and did one of my little walking tours of the town. It has a really cool downtown, especially with the creek running right through the center of town. There's a lot of restaurants where you can sit out on the balcony that overlook the creek. It's really cool. Some of the shots I was looking at, I'm like, that doesn't look like a place in Oregon. It looks like some place in France, you know, like some little cafe overlooking the river. Then you see a guy with an Oregon State beaver hat on crushing a beer can on his forehead and you're back to the reality. You're in Oregon. One thing I did notice in my visit to Silverton is they don't have as many closed up shops as a lot of the small towns that I've visited in recent years have. A lot of the places I visit, I would say are sitting around 25% vacancy on their commercial properties. I saw one in Silverton and it looked like they were getting ready to put something in there. Silverton's a nice town. If you're ever near Salem or in Portland, go give it a visit. Number three, Camas, Washington. This is another one that I've visited in recent months. They have one of the best downtowns I've seen ever. It's also another place that doesn't have a lot of vacancies and it has a really cool old school theater downtown. Camas is just far enough away from Portland, Oregon where you don't have to deal with all their BS, but it's close enough in case you do need to go there. Yes, 
you might need to go there if, I don't know, maybe a doctor's appointment, something like that. But Camus is like that perfect distance, you know, not too close, not too far. You're in that sweet spot. The only real knock to Camus, which I mentioned in that walking tour video, is their high school. Their mascot is the paper makers. That's just wrong. They got a big paper mill in town and I get it, but the paper makers? Yeah, it just does, I don't know. I mean, it's the paper makers. It's a lot better than the Yuma criminals. Yes. That's real. Camus sits on the Columbia River. It's actually directly across from Troutdale, Oregon. And it's got a couple cool lakes in town. When we were there for the walking tour thing, I saw that like one of them's a swimming hole and there's a whole bunch of kids there. It's like a heat wave. A lot of the shops were closed. That's how hot it was. It was like 110 degrees in the Portland metro area, which Camus, I guess, is almost part of. If you want to see the full video of the Camus walking tour, I'll put that and the Silverton one in the comment section below. Number two, Pacific Grove, California. Pacific Grove, California sits on a peninsula, which is right in the Monterey Bay. Matter of fact, the Monterey Bay Aquarium is partly in Monterey and part in Pacific Grove. Pacific Grove's downtown area, it's like Lighthouse Avenue. It's pretty cool. You can walk down there, go to the different shops. It's, it's a nice place to visit. It's right there by the ocean. You get that cool breeze and you get that Monterey fog in there in the morning. It's a nice place to live. Now, as far as the town goes outside of the downtown area, it's nice. It's clean. It sort of looks like just about any nice town you could find in California. The difference is because of its location, the property values are about five times more expensive than it would be in just about any other part of California. They have a mobile home park here that is selling mobile homes for over a million dollars. <laughs> There's a place called Briggs Avenue here. I know this because when I was stationed in Monterey, uh, two girls from the Language Institute, I think they were in the Air Force. Anyway, they were staying there and they had a little party one night that lasted a total of about 90 minutes before the police showed up. But they were roommates in this mobile home park. It was pretty interesting. But yeah, if you could afford it, Pacific Grove's probably one of the best ones on this list. Cute town, ocean views, amazing golf around this area, and the Monterey Bay Aquarium, which I haven't been there in quite a while, but it's pretty cool. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There's a link down below. We would love it if you went over there and subscribed. All right, on to number one. And number one, Bar Harbor, Maine. About three hours northeast of Portland, Maine, you have Bar Harbor, Maine, which is on Mount Desert Island and butts up against Acadia National Forest, which in my opinion is one of the most overlooked national parks in the national park system. I've been to this one, it's been a few years, but it is beautiful. I love Bar Harbor, Maine. Actually, I was probably gonna be going back there. In 2024, we had another cruise planned from Boston that goes up and into Canada, but Bar Harbor, Maine's one one of the stops on it. Well, they might be limiting the amount of cruise ships that go into Bar Harbor, Maine, because the locals are complaining. You know, it's always the local residents, but you talk to the local shop owners and they're singing a different tune. Normally when the residents do something like that, and then let's say the cruise ships do stop going, they'll find another port to go to, which is easy enough. And then people in the community start losing jobs. And then they're like, oh, we didn't think this through. I mean, I get it. Bunch of people coming in on cruise ships kind of strain the town for a couple months every year and it is a pain but the town makes a bunch of money off the cruise ships i promise you if these locals do win out you know and it's not all the locals it's a group of locals if that wins out and the cruise ships stop coming there i'm sure around 30 percent of the businesses in their downtown harbor area will have to shut their doors within a year. Within five years, they'll be trying to get the cruise ships back. But by then, they should be well entrenched at some place like Rockland, Maine, right down the coast. But besides all that nonsense, Bar Harbor is a beautiful town, and that's why all those cruise ships go there. It is a nice looking town, a lot of history, a lot of things to do. You know, I think if I was going to move to New England, this would be one of the towns I would consider. Montpelier, Bar Harbor. I was like Provincetown. I haven't been there in quite a while, but I always thought that place was pretty cool. It's right there on the mouth of Cape Cod. All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.